Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the next episode of the GNA podcast. I am the Omarion variant, Hashida Druvidu. And I am your favorite sequel, Soberoni. Welcome back to the GNA podcast. We talk about all things anime, the good, the bad, and the weave. How you doing, Oni? Um, my throat is scratchy and I'm tired. Same. But you know what? I'm excited for a new season of anime. Absolutely. That's what we are here for, y'all. This is the winter 2022 anime preview. Um, for those who are listening for the first time, how this works essentially is that we are going to be reading the synopses of all the anime that are uh airing this uh season uh via anychart.net uh oni and i you just you know alter between each title until we get to the end and then once we're done with that we then discuss you know amongst ourselves which six we're going to be watching and as always the seventh is left up to our patrons yes we are covering seven shows in our weekly uh podcast week by week every new episode and uh, unfortunately i know we're gonna get stuck with something i have a certain show in mind that i think the patrons are gonna stick us with uh this season yeah and i'm, I'm not them. yeah i'll leave it to them but i'm not excited for it. <laughs> but hey if you want to input on that vote you know you can become a patron or a channel member <laughs> helps us out and you get to uh Screw us over in times like this. Yep. Or Twitch subscriber. Or Twitch. Yep, Twitch as well. Yep, yep, yep. All right. So considering both of us have these scratchy, itchy ass throats, let's just get on with this. And I think I'm going to start because I, I don't think I went. I think it's been a while since I went first. Mm-hmm. So we're going to obviously skip uh, Demon Slayer. Well, make sure you're sorting. Are we starting by title? Oh shit! Right, you know what? That's that's on me. Whoop whoop whoop! Title. There we go. Wow! Now, mm. <laughs> so that's what I was gonna start with to begin with. <laughs> so it didn't really matter, I guess, because nothing's to. Oh, thanks. Yep. Uh huh. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Ambulance. Mr. Ambulance. Thank you. Love that so much. It's giving a background music to our theme. <laughs> yeah. You're reading. We're in danger. We don't know what we're doing. <laughs> we need excellent background music for your uh, reading of this synopsis. <laughs> okay. I love that how that changed literally nothing because the score for everything is zero. Yeah. So it was always alphabetized. It just had Demon Slayer in the front because that's the only thing that, that's the only thing that was airing. But it's but it's a leftover. So why is it in the if for some reason it's not counting it as a leftover? I don't know. That's okay, sure, whatever you got it, girl. <laughs> uh, we are starting with Akebi chan no Sela Fukaku by Clover Works. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Oh, sorry, There's like a piece of lint distracted me. Um, hold on, let me move my mic. There we go. It's it's Komichi Akebi's first year of junior high, and she has her heart set on one thing robot private academy's sale uniform that's right non-actual education to better herself <laughs> just Fuck a that. fucking uniform as the chat as the next chapter of her life gets closer she dreams of all the exciting new experiences she'll get to have school lunches classes club activities and of course making lots of friends with her favorite outfit on Komichi feels ready for anything so is the show just about uniform fetish <laughs> i wish it was that interesting is there this girl being like oh my god i want this outfit oh my god i got the outfit oh my god i'm a high school girl oh, sorry a, a junior high girl i mean i love cloverworks cloverworks is uh an amazing studio they've done mm -hmm. i believe they did babylonia right they're the ones who did uh babylonia they're doing spy family uh, next season, they did Horror Mia. They're like they're a really good studio, but this doesn't really strike my fancy. Not at all. It is extraordinary the slice of life. Yeah, this seems like one of those shows that they're just doing as like a filler, like a stopgap. Like, yeah, we need to do something this season. <laughs> Let's right. just put this in here before we do our big project. Yeah, it's like it, it's it seems so like 
not specific. I'm like, well, who is this for? Like, who would want to watch this? Just based on the picture, I thought it was going to be like Shoujo Ai, Yuri. Maybe I'm just conditioned. to Like, I see this art style and I see two women on screen. I'm like, oh, this is Shoujo Ai. No, nope. <laughs> I, I, I saw the trailer and not, not even a lick. Damn. If it was Shoujo Ai, at least I could be like, you know what? Maybe I'll check this out. There's something here. <laughs> Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. So once again, reminding a reminder that straight men are very much led by very simple. Uh huh. All right. So when you senses. see a shonen eye, can I be just like, oh, ugh. guess we don't I have mean, to worry sure. about this. <laughs> I mean, sure. I mean, sure. You can, but I, for one, at least can say it's different because at least mm. I can watch an etchy with women in it. Hmm. I can watch Etchy with just guys, and as long as there's also women. See, see, no, so notice how I didn't need that caveat. Notice how I didn't say that caveat. I didn't say anything about I need men. I, I said woman, Etchy, period. Well, I can, all right, I can watch an Etchy with guys if it's funny, all right? Mm. Or compelling mm. in some other way. Okay, yeah, that no, that's fair because that's basically my premise. Like, I can watch Etchy with just women as long as it's fun. Yeah. yeah. Or fun in general. Which this is not. <sighs> Which is not. So yes. Pass. So no. All right. Next up we have Ari Fueta Show. Oh god, I hate I forgot. I, I hate titles. <laughs> Ari Fueta Shoku Yo de Sekai Saikyo second season by Asred Studio Mother. The second season of Ari Fueta. Transported to another world and left behind by his former friends, Hajime had to make his rise from literal rock bottom. It was in the labyrinth where he strengthened his weak magic and found several beautiful allies. Now, after saving his classmates, he ventures for Arison to escort Miyu and her mother. He'll fight and defeat anyone he has in order to find a way home, including a god. Yes. Uh, sounds like a generic isekai. Is it an isekai? Yeah, it's an isekai. Yeah, did we? Do, I mean, I. It was season one last time. This I season, remember watching season one briefly, like very briefly, because I think the main girl is like a a lowly or something, or at least she's <laughs> she's really short and cute. Um, and that's that's all. That's the only takeaway I had from that show. The main girl is short and cute. Wait, was this the? Oh shit! <gasps> Oh wow! This anime. Okay, never mind. It's, what? Wow. You, you like the show? Uh, like might be such a strong word. I'm not even sure if I finished <laughs> season one. <laughs> I didn't know it was this one. Wow. You said lowly, and I'm just like, isn't that girl and that dude who? Yeah, and it's all coming back to me. Wow. It's all coming back to me now. No. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really going to fight for it per se. Like it's. Uh... I haven't seen season one. I like. I've seen snippets of random clips and like maybe an episode here or there. It's like it's cute. Like mm. it's not. It's it's a. Uh, it's it's something to watch. Like it's there. It, it didn't leave much of a super yeah, like, big impression on me because I didn't. <laughs> I haven't watched it in so long. This seems like something I would watch. Because I like generic trash. Well, I don't know. I, maybe it's not fair to call it trashy. But I like yeah, generic. I would say Isekai. it's trashy. Like, even though <laughs> I feel like that. I feel like there's a running gag where the where like him and the lolly. It's like. It's like, are y'all gonna fuck or not? I like, like that it's, gag. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, I, like, so I, like I, I thought of you a lot you. when I watched this. I, like, <laughs> thank I was you. like, why is it only not watching this? This is literally just this all, seems like, like something I would watch. She's naked half the time. Like. Fuck, Duncan. All right. You know what? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm gonna no, watch not this, this. Maybe though. maybe I should do the first thing, I guess. But because I like like I like smartphone that stupid Isekai smartphone anime. And it's like I like fun, stupid shows that are edgy and whatnot. So maybe this isn't, I'll it's watch not it. it's not any of those. It's it's just, she just happens she just happens to Andrew, do you want me to watch this? <laughs> I never said it was any of that. You jumped to that conclusion all by yourself. Uh, I'll check out. It's not, it's not super serious. Like it's like, it, like I said, it's, it's a very casual watch. That's all. I'll say it that much. It's I don't mind watch. this casual it's, isekai. Like a casual action adventure where you're just like, he's in the labyrinth, learning about this world and how to like, 
fight and stuff. Like I, I will say the premise of the it's a little more interesting because he's not like in this town or whatever. Like he's stuck underground. Yeah, yeah. It has night. Doesn't and it, like pretty... jump, back, jump back and forth between like perspectives or something like him and the other people. And the yeah, and other people. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll check it a little bit. Anyway, it, it's not going to be good for the podcast because there's not going to be much to talk about, I guarantee, if we covered this. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like I feel like the moment we agree to this, it'll just be shit. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately. So, skip Yes. All right. So we are moving on to Barao no Soretsu by JC Staff. Richard, the ambitious third son of the House of York, mm. believes he is cursed, damned from birth to eternal darkness. Wow, what a, what a sunny disposition. Mm-hmm. But it is truly fate that sets him on the path. But it but is it truly fate that sets him on the path to personal destruction? or his own tormented longings. Based on an early draft of Shakespeare's Richard III, Ayakano's dark fantasy reminds the man who could be king standing between worlds, between classes, between good and evil. Wake me up inside. <laughs> right, <wake> literally. Up. <laughs> so by the way, this is like a high. I feel like this is definitely like low key shown and I. And oh, you see, you're doing the same thing I did. You just see two guys on screen and they're very. No, no, no. I watched a trailer. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, fine. Fair I enough. watched a trailer. No, it's, a, it's, I think a lot of, in my, what low Daphne is, I, I know a very little. He kept saying, like, pointing to the fact that I'm a guy, I'm a guy, while like other like dudes are pressing <laughs> up on him. So yeah, well, it is it is Shakespeare, so I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, <laughs> I've never read yeah. King Richard III. That's like one of the few Shakespeare things. That, when are we getting a Titus Andronicus anime? That's like perfect for anime. I wouldn't know. I didn't really read a lot of Shakespeare. Uh, only is the only is the history literature buff, not me. Yeah. Um, I like when anime does this kind of stuff where they're like, we're going to do historical, at least it's different, you know, it's not like, mm-hmm. uh, isekai about a guy <laughs> in a labyrinth and a bunch of schoolgirls. <laughs> it's very different. Exactly. So I can, am- yes. I can commend that, but I'm not yes. going to watch it. Oh, me neither. Like, <laughs> see, unlike someone, I don't just watch it because it just happens to be a shonen eye. Fair Hair enough. Flip. Also, it looks extremely depressing, so... Yeah, it was, it was like, uh, like yeah, I'm just not, I'm, I'm not feeling it right now. Fair enough. Next up, we have Q. I love the title by Graphonica Yumeta Company, based on an idle trading mobile game produced by Liber Entertainment and Pony Canyon. Of course, we have to have a idle anime and a uh mobile game adaptation. So I'm glad this checks off two boxes in our. Yep. Uh, anime preview bingo card <laughs> uh um god they even look like idol master ripple <laughs> oh they it's like it's like these are like the first and or second drafts of the idol master like character designs mm-hmm. easily um, well, I do like the girl with the with like the short hair, but like she has like one long lock. I think that's like my favorite design. Yeah, the girl on the right looks like uh, Hibiki from Idol Master, who is one of my favorite Idol Master girls. So I guess I kind of like her by yeah. default. Yeah, all of that just to say no. Mm-hmm. Moving on to Dolls Frontline by Asahi Production. After the Third World War, nations devastated by biological warfare no longer had the ability to protect the wastelands. So the defense of these terrorists, is, oh sorry, these territories is left to private military companies like Griffin and Kruger, whose android soldiers or tactical dolls are tasked with fighting the rogue android army of Sangvis Ferry. Now M4A1, the indecisive but potentially capable leader of the elite anti rain team must protect her comrades in a series of operations to try and regain the upper hand against Sangvis Betty. I was going to say, isn't this that one mobile game? But no, that's Girls Frontline. I thought it was too. <laughs> I thought Frontline, I was like, this sounds familiar, and I don't know why. Yeah, I mean, did you see the trailer for this? Yes. 
How did it look to you? Didn't care for it. Man, like the military otaku in me, and it's like, oh yeah, military stuff and cute girls makes me want to watch it. But it's literally just like a like the, and that's how I know it's not gonna be that great because most of it was just most of the trailer was just shots of like the million girls that they have, (laughs) and very little fighting. And I'm just like, ah, so it's gonna be that show. Got it. Don't care. The studio that does it's pretty hit or miss. Although they did Medica Box and they did um. Uh, what's that other show that had really good art style? Peach Boy, Riverside. Mm. Eh, yeah. This is definitely one of those shows that's either going to be super generic or like low key pretty good, but I don't want to take that risk. Yeah. Okay. Next up, we have Fantasy Bishoujo Juniku Oji Santo by OLM. A dull man and his house, his handsome best friend were summoned to another world by a naked goddess. However, because the goddess is mischief, he has turned into a peerless, beautiful <coughs> girl. This show's getting me hooked. <laughs> to get back his body, he has to go down a journey with his friend, his best friend to defeat a demon king. An old man that became a little girl and a handsome old man. Let the madness filled another world journey rom com begin. Yeah, I saw the I saw the the what you calls it trailer, the trailer. Yeah, and if we don't watch it, I'm definitely watching it on my own. I'm all for watching it. It sounds really dumb and fun, and I'm all for right. dumb fun. It really was really. <laughs> it was, yeah, it just was very silly. Yeah, see, this looks like something I can get behind. All right, we'll put this as a maybe, and we'll come back to it. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Up next, we have Futsal Boys by Dio Media. The franchise story is set in a world over a decade after Futsal has skyrocketed in global popularity. Protagonist Haru Yamam- is it Yamato? Is this Yamato? Yamato watches the championship of the U18 World Cup and is inspired by a Japanese player named Tokinari Tenoji. He joins the Koyo Academy High School's futsal team, excuse me, with the goal of becoming a player like Tenoji. There he finds friends and together they face their rivals. What is futsal? Is it like. I don't know. Is it like. It's some kind of like soccer? It sounds like football. Is it like Blitzball? Oh my God. I wish. But no, they're all they're all on land. So I'm gonna. It literally is just soccer, isn't it? I'm looking at the thing. It, it just looks like a soccer ball. Okay, cool. Can they just don't say care? Soccer? It's like soccer trademark. Well, no, they can't say. So- oh shit! They do say soccer. They do. Say soccer yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> don't like sports, Adley. Unfortunately, Boy, I was like sports. Yuck! Gross. <laughs> no, thank you. Pass. But something we might not pass on is. Genjutsu Shogi Yusha no Okoku Sei Kenki Part 2, a.k.a. The Realist Hero, by J.C. Staff. The second part of that title I just read. Summoned to a fantasy world, Kazuya Soma is a ruling kingdom <laughs> with a non-traditional and very human route of administration reform. He's tackling food shortages, mastering dark magic, and dazzling a few ladies along the way. Despite his latest good intentions... Um, Kazuya breaks his ban on war to defeat a military dictatorship. Now he must answer to the Grand Chaos Empire's idealistic leader. Uh oh. Roar! Oh. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so, this is a controversial one because I know you weren't that high on the first season, right? I like. Uh, we covered it on the podcast. We did. It's like. Oh, man. <laughs> like, yeah it was definitely yeah. very niche and if you're someone who's like really like if you're someone who plays strategy games like you're someone who's like i love europa universalis and hearts of iron and civilization, and civilization. yeah you will love the show if you Come are on, <laughs> if you aren't up on the because uh, this show goes hard into like running a kingdom like they'll be talking about fucking agriculture and economic reform <laughs> it's like spice and wolf basically uh-huh. um, <laughs> um i enjoyed it but it was a bit rough to get through some parts so 
I I can go either way on whether we want to cover the second part. Mm, I don't know because it's like they reached like a new part where like oh my god shit's happening yeah like they did leave off on an actual cliffhanger that was like oh shit stuff might happen <laughs> right stuff and things even though mm, I feel like it's gonna be more politics but it's like the kind of politics it's like oh my god like the interesting kind of politics like, like war like kind of like <laughs> oh my god yeah watch our P's and Q's or mm. else the empire's gonna kill us all yeah, it's gonna go. Hopefully, goes from C-SPAN to Game of Thrones real quick. Yeah, me um, too. So we'll put this a as a bit. maybe, and Definitely. we'll see what our lineup looks like. All right. Up next, you have Genso Sun Gokushi Tengen Reishinki Reishinki by Geek Toys. <clears throat> when the three kingdoms are ravaged by demons and monsters, four heroes with little in common must fight to unite the realm's most vicious enemies. Together, the heroes unveil an insidious conspiracy while sharing the joys and sorrows of battling a mysterious organization intent of tearing them and the kingdoms apart. Hmm. So they didn't really... Sh- I didn't really see the thing for this one, the... Trailer. The trailer. It doesn't look like they it have has the a trailer, yeah. Yeah, they have the link embedded at this point. So I'm hmm. just like, eh. <laughs> To me, it looks like a very standard fantasy mm. anime. Mm-hmm. Like I would same. So I'm not particularly interested. Yeah, me neither. Next, next up, we have uh, Hakozume Koban Joshi no Yakushu by Madhouse. Female police officer Kawai had enough of a of a career she wasn't even that into, and was about to hand off in her uh, hand in her resignation. When the unthinkable happened, she met the new female director of her station. And after spending a little time with this gorgeous role model, Kawhi realizes that maybe she isn't quite done being a police officer after all. This tells me surprisingly little about the show. It does. And, and I saw the trailer, and the trailer also does not give me much either. Like, so it I'm looks like, like a comedy from the poster. Uh, it kind of gives that vibe mm-hmm. and it's like damn because you know like i said i've been lately i've been drawn to more grown-up anime yeah. or the settings where they're adults exactly and it is by madhouse like because the, the idea of a cop comedy by madhouse does sound good to me but i don't know if that's what this is yeah and i'm not I mean, I'm not the hugest fan of the animation, but it's supposed to be a comedy, so it's not supposed to be like super mm-hmm. gorgeous. So it's like, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I feel like I didn't get enough. Right, right. See if I wanted it or not. Shall we maybe it? Yeah, we can maybe it. Right. Next up. Is you. Oh, I thought I just read it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Never mind. Um, next up we have Kaijin Kai Hatsubu no Ko- Kuroitsu-san by Quad. Kuroitsu is an assistant researcher in the Superhuman Research and Development Department of Agatsya. Okay. Mm. A villainous secret organization that battles the with heroes who try to save the world. Kuroitsu lives a busy life in Agatsya, caught between the absurd requests of her bosses, making presentations, Implementing new features into superhumans and getting results within the allotted time, budget, and spec requests, all without re- vacation. Now this sounds like a good comedy. I know, I saw it too. I'm just like, this is literally, this is literally just um um. Yeah, I know what you're just saying. Oh uh, fuck, what was it called with number six and then yeah six? Uh, exactly. I I forgot what it's called. I also forgot what it was called. But it was good. So <laughs> this exactly. reminds me of that a lot. Even like the character in the front of the poster looks like that one chick. Like I thought this was I thought it was a continuation of that, honestly. Mm-hmm. So I was shocked when that was not the case. Ooh, I might want the all right. Can we put this as a maybe? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So I saw it and I was just like, damn, that looks good. It does. I like some absurd comments. <laughs> Excuse me. Next up we have Karakai Jozu no Takagi Sun 3 by Shine Animation, the third season of that title. Mm. Um, 
it's the it's the troll girl manga which is like its own genre now so i guess that's not really a specific way of defining it but i haven't seen the first two seasons but yeah i'm watching the third season me neither Let's move on to Kenja no Denshi wo Nanoru Kenja by Studio ACAT. Kagami Sakimori plays as the great mage Dan Bilf <laughs> in his favorite MMO. He falls asleep after a night testing new character appearances, but instead of waking up to suspend a game, he's inside of Arc Earth Online as a girl. Now named Mira, he must convince the, pe- the game's people that Mira is the pupil of Dan Bilf who vanished without a trace 30 years ago and figure out how he got here. Wow, I love Sword Art Online. <laughs> Minus. Yeah. I literally, I skimmed it, and I'm just like, wow, yep, this is this is a generic. Yeah, this is basically, what if Sora Online, but also Overlord, kind of. I guess. Um, No. Mm-hmm. Next, That's it. <laughs> but what we do have a yes to is Kimetsu no Yaiba Yukaku Hen by UFO Table. After visiting the Rengoku, Ren- bitch, I'll, stop, 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 stop. Did we already read this? Did we last season? I don't uh, recall. Sh- no, because we skipped it. Because yeah, I'm like, do we have to read it? If we're it's already second, it's the second it? season of Demon Slayer. We're actually, yeah, we're already watching this. So well, exactly. So I'm like, just get to the next we're, one. We're watching this, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm a little point. <laughs> no, up. we're like, dropping Demon Slayer. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we need more yeah. room for that cop anime. <laughs> next up, we have Koroshi Ai by Platinum Vision. Um, two assassins face off: the cool bounty hunter Chateau and the mysterious and powerful. Rang Ha. Chateau and Rang Ha become enemies after this fight. At, at least they should have. But for some reason, Rang Ha takes a liking to Chateau and begins following her around. Little, oh, that's a long one. Little by little, <laughs> Chateau develops a cooperative partnership with Rang Ha, which gets her caught up in the struggle against the organization, hunting him down. Furthermore, that battle is, re- is related to her past as well. Two mismatched assassins <laughs> oh we- weave together a twisted assassin x assassin thriller the strange gears of fate begin to move what the first episode aired in early premiere in mayc 2021 i didn't see it will be i it reminds um, me of psychopaths and um phantom which are both shows i like but i don't know yeah so i have like a slight weakness for like like things that came from china because mm-hmm. they're just always so interesting. Well, then, like they're, they're, I, listen, I feel like there's a big quality difference. Some things from China are really good, and some things from China are like... Are, they didn't get no Guardian from China? Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's extremely... Like, it's I, extremely I'm, hit or miss. I still need you to watch that... Uh, I, yeah. That Chinese anime. The one with the guy who knows how to fight. And mm-hmm. like that little Kung Fu Because that is literally some of the best, like animated fighting i've just seen in like so it's so it's so good anyways um but yeah so it's like I, I, this could really be really hit or miss yeah um i mean we could put it uh, as a as a maybe i, I like uh, the not really i don't i don't i don't want I don't, only because it's like an act it's gonna be like an actiony thing and i'm just like we already have Right, and nice. have a lot of action yeah. everywhere. Oh, yeah, we also have uh, Attack on Titan, which we'll get to later. So. Yeah, exactly. All right. All right, up next we have Leodale no Daichi Night by My Whole Film. Before, after a tragic accident, Kiana Kagami's only freedom comes from VR MMO RPG Leodale. One day, her life is... Her life is... is, 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 is her life support system shuts off and Kiana passes away. When she wakes up, she finds herself in Leodale 200 years later in the future as the high elf of Kena with lost skills but incredible stats. She must forge relationships with the residents of this new world, which shockingly include the children character she designed herself. A leisurely adventure tale is about to begin 
featuring a girl transported to a game to a game world and the smiles and tears she shares with her quirky companions. This sounds See, now, sad this as fuck. is Overlord. Yeah, this is Overlord. And it sounds sad as fuck. I don't want to watch this. <laughs> I don't want to watch an easy guy. It's like, it's comfy, but also you're going to cry your ass off because it's about this girl killed dies. Pass. <laughs> this is, this is Overlord and, and you're lying April. <laughs> I mean, no, no. Why, why you're lying, April? Because I feel like it invokes the same emotion. <laughs> the oh, I'm gonna spoil it. You're lying, April. Is there spoilers um, for your lying, April? Because I feel like the premise is the spoiler for your lying, April. Right, but it's like if you know it before. I, I mean, I guess <laughs> spoilers. Homegirl dies at the end, not the beginning. Whoa! I couldn't have seen that coming. I'm just saying, homegirl dies right off the bat and is reborn mm-hmm. here, like most people in, in Isekai's, or like half the people in Isekai. Yeah, but you know, they're gonna do like flashbacks and she's gonna have her like, oh, moment of love and levity and uh, I don't know. It's yeah. gonna touch on other... strings. Well, either way, there's more fantasies I want to watch either way, so so, nope. Pass. Next up, we have Ninjala by All Oh my goodness. Which is giving me a seizure just looking at... Do I have to read this whole thing? Because you, you know we're not watching this, right? Girl, no. Can we, we skip... All right, if deal. I have to read this thing... We, we skip this I and have... I read the next one. Huh? <laughs> we skip this and I read the next one. Fair enough. Okay, cool. Yes. So that's just a kid show. I ain't reading all that shit. Orient by ACGT. At age 10, best friends Musashi and Kojiro... Wait, why do they have a whole... Why do they have, like, literally a whole plot? Damn. Exactly! It's like, oh this is a kid show, but let's have a whole fucking book <laughs> Like, on... the whole history! <laughs> like, the whole history! It's not just like, me and my friends are born in a world where, like, we're just ninjas with the... I don't know... <laughs> oh, it's not paint. That's Splatoon. <laughs> yeah. With whatever, like, you just be, damn, they give a whole backstory. Okay, I'm sorry, continue. <laughs> yes. Orient by ACGT. At age 10, best friends Musashi and Kojiro sat in excited silence as Kojiro's father spun tales of evil demons who preyed on the innocent and the warriors who defeated them. Practicing swordplay, the two swear an oath to become the strongest in the world. And as they grow up, Kojiro turns cynical, and Musashi comes to realization this one's also long. That he can't overturn 150 years of demon rule on his own. He's being called a prodigy with a pickaxe. And he is almost ready to seal or to sell the life, to settle into a life of labor. Yet he can't shake the feeling that he is still, that he still has a responsibility to act. That's just a typo. Got it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and soon the injustices of his world will force his hand. I'm like, oh my so god, so generic plotted anime this season. <laughs> I don't like more well, than we were warned. We were warned. We were warned. We were warned by Savior and Orion, but still. Like yes. all these anime plots are just like two samurai wander into a village of schoolgirls. And, and hijinks ensue. But, uh, but uh but yeah. All that just for now. Mm-hmm. Huh. Crazy. All right. Next up is Princess Reconnect uh, Redive Season 2 by Sci Games Pictures. It's the second season of Princess Reconnect Redive. Yeah. So it's like, I'm not super against it. It's just, it's going to make me sad coming out to put Digimon on pause oh, while I go watch game? this. <laughs> I am, which, by the way, sidebar. I'm waiting for the part. I guess it comes later in the series where it's like reminds you of season three. You're not the wait. What episode are you on? Like episode four. I would say episode four is like the closest one getting... because it's like it was like oh, I was like oh, there's like knives and kids' faces. Like well, okay. it's it, all right. Let me. Refer, it hasn't gotten as dark as season three yet. I feel like there's seeds there, but more so the the whole like Digimon in the real world and. Interacting with the real world type of thing. Okay. <coughs> All right, that's fair. But yeah, um, I watched season one of Princess Connect. I really liked it. 
I think it was hilarious. It's the 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 director of Konosuba also does this show and it shows mm-hmm. like it has a very Konosuba esque uh style of comedy. Which yeah, I appreciate. that is true. So yeah, I so yeah, like I I'd be willing to finish season one just okay, only because we ha- I literally have like two weeks, so that's more than enough time for me yeah. to watch it all. And I think it's only like twelve or thirteen episodes. Yeah, and I'm already like three, at least like three or four episodes in. Cool. So we'll this put this as a maybe, and we'll come back to that. Yeah, for sure. Next up, we have I thought it was Rayman's Club. We have <laughs> Ryman's Club by Linden Films. Story centers on Mikoto Shiratori, a childy, a childy, da, 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 a childhood prodigy at badminton. Oh God, no! Why? This does not scream <laughs> badminton to me. <laughs> not at all. Why y'all in suits? <laughs> you don't play badminton in suits. But continue. But who never recognized from a major loss during who, who never recovered from major loss during a high school competition? Now he works in the sales department of the Sunlight Beverage Company. Playing badminton on the side. <laughs> wow, I know, I know, I, I know. I said I, I, I'm trying to watch more anime. We're not in high school, but girl, the way I, did my, I just glossed over that. Like, I'll take most boring anime backstory for five hundred. <laughs> wow, wow. The way I did not feel compelling at all. Why badminton? <laughs> Why badminton? Why the Sunshine Beverage Company? <laughs> it's Sunlight. Thank Whatever. you very much. Sunlight. <laughs> it's Sunlight. Oh my god, if you can get their name correct. Mm. Like, oh my god. Oh my god, Ani. <laughs> oh, I man. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, ooh. I'm like, what did I just, what, what was just read to me? <laughs> All right. Up next, you have Sabiro No Armor Reme by Kigumi. The anime adaptation of Rusty. <coughs> mm. I'll try that again. The anime adaptation of Rusted Armor is a multimedia project that first started with a stage play and a, man- a manga a- adaptation. The project focuses on the relationship between the gun toting Magoichi, who is a leader of the Saikiki mercenary group, and the Sengoku era warlord Oda Nobunaga. I don't like the art. Looks very old. I didn't see. I didn't even see the art. I'm just looking at the poster. Oh, it's CGI skip. Oh, there we go. That explains why it looks so off putting. Pass. Next yep. up, we have <laughs> Sa- <laughs> Sabi. <Run> yeah, <away>. <laughs> run quick. Erase it from your mind. Saiki or Saibi Sabi Kui Bisco by Oz. Japan's post-apocalyptic wasteland, replete <laughs> with dust, can only be saved by one thing: fungus. Bisco Akiboshi, a wanted criminal and skilled archer, searches for a legendary mushroom known as Saibukui, said to devour any and all rust. Uh, joining him on this epic saga to save the country is a giant crab and young doctor. Can this unlikely trio find a fabled fungi and save the land? All right, bitch. Is it rust or dust? Is it rust or dust? Wait, 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 it, no, it, it alternates. Okay, no, it's not yes, me. yes. No, not you. I was talking to you. I was talking to the synopsis. Because it's like, one said dust, and one said rust. Listen, I'm just I, like... I kind of like the premise being so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> what? We're finding mushrooms, and so I'm thinking about, see, that other show, that the, the, the fucking badminton thing was too realistic, and this one is just this is anime, all right? Yeah. Dude with a doctor and a crab going on a hunt for a <laughs> rust or dust eating mushroom. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's fair. And that is fair. Makes yes. sense. Don't know if we'll want to watch it for the podcast, though. Mm-mm. <laughs> so pass on that. Up next, we have Sayuki Reload Zero in Violent Films. When the monstrous Gumao was defeated by the war god Nataku Taishi and imprisoned in Hoto Castle, an era of peace began in the land of Togenkyo. Now, hundreds of years later, those who are seeking to resurrect Gumao have unleashed a plague upon the world. The wave of negative power generated by his attempted resurrection has driven yokai to the brink of insanity. 
To save the humanity from violent slaughter, Kanzeon Bosatsu sends Son Goku, Genjo Sanzo, Sha Gojo, and Chohakai, aka Zaddy, to the mm-hmm. West in order to prevent Gumao from rising once again. So while we will not be covering this on the mm-hmm. podcast, because I do realize that it is going to literally this is this is the definition of like an just a ship episodic ass anime. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally just like they come to a town or some location, some shit with the demon, plot twist, it's the demon's actually XYZ. We kill it next literally next episode. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel like it's they usually don't there's very rare moments where they're like, yeah, plot, actual plot to the over the overarching plot herder so yeah i would in in good faith i can't recommend this anime but i will be watching this on my own because like i said this is one of those animes where it's where i can uh sympathize with uh oni's a uh, feeling of like or his needs to just watch anime with a bunch of cute girls doing nothing <laughs> exactly this is kind of how like i feel now <laughs> except it's a bunch of pretty men killing stuff and looking cute while doing it like that's all I want. <laughs> for me that for me that's all i need and <laughs> i'm good fair enough i hope you enjoy it and then and them arguing with each other which you know definitely shows some somewhat underlying you know underlying sexual tension between the four of them so or at least the ones that we make up in our, our minds at yeah, the age of 12. you enjoy your fan fiction that this show will undoubtedly birth girl it's, it's, <laughs> the way it is too late for that <laughs> so too late don't even, i don't even know what my favorite pairing is anymore but anyways continue next up we have so speaking of the, the, the yaoi train continues <laughs> <laughs> Sasaki to Miyano by Studio D, my favorite. Miyano <laughs> spends his days peacefully reading boys' love comics and worrying about how girly his face is until a chance encounter leads him to a scuffle with his senior Sasaki. Intrigued by his feisty <laughs> junior Miyano, delinquent Sasaki uses every opportunity he can to get closer. Can we just pause and be like, delinquent? Mm-hmm. Like, he's so pretty. The fr- like delinquent where <laughs> he is he is beautiful you know so Shodan and i do this all the time like oh he's a oh, Shou- to be fair i guess uh shoujo i also do we're like oh they're a delinquent character but they're like super hot and like well exactly and <laughs> like they're beautiful maybe some of them in some cases they're like more uh, somewhat more masculine mm-hmm. and they're just they're, they're never really a bad person they're just like a misunderstood exactly figure <laughs> basically and and that's basically what i gathered from watching the trailer uh-huh i figured this guy looks like he takes care of cats i bet there's like a scene in the show where he just like everybody's like he's a delinquent he's crazy and then the next scene is gonna pan over and he's like feeding a cat in the rain or something hmm i'm gonna put it as a maybe and mm-hmm. i think only knows why mm-hmm <laughs> he, he know he knows why because <laughs> i know what he wants <laughs> and he knows and i know he's gonna have to fight to get it we'll cross that bridge mm-hmm. we're getting there soon bitch yeah we are <laughs> all right up next is shikaku shikaku is it shikaku yes it is it's shikaku no psycho kenja by jc staff his strength is limited by the magical crest with which he was born, Matthias, the world's m- most powerful sage, decides reincarnation is necessary to become the strongest of all. That was a terrible fucking sentence, by the way. <laughs> it hurt to listen like, to that sentence. <laughs> I was like, what? Wait, why is the direct object? We could have just put you in the bit. All these clauses could have been shifted around. <laughs> okay, cool. You got it, girl. Upon his rebirth as a young boy, Matthias is thrilled to discover that he's been born with the Atomo Crest for magical combat on his first try. Fortunately, the world he's been born to has 
abysmally poor standards when it comes to magic, and everyone thinks he's still marked for failure. Now it's up to Matthias to prove everyone wrong. World's strongest sage style. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks super generic, just like the other generic show. Right. Time. Also, I love how the mark on his hand definitely looks like a command seal. Oh, yeah. So that's the only, that's that only thing that pulled me to it. And I was like, <gasps> and I was like, oh, no. It's... <laughs> Is this a fate spin off? <laughs> no. Nah, God, listen, God, I hope not. <laughs> no, you know, all the spin offs aren't good. Yeah, they are not so all created <laughs> equal. There are some on that level. That's true. Mm mm. Next up, we have the uh, most hype show, arguably, of the season. Shingeki no Kyojin, the final season, part two by MAPPA. It's the second season of Shingeki no Kyojin, the final season, or the second part of the... The War for Paradise Zeroes in on Shingashima. Just as Yeagerus have seized control, after taking a huge blow from a surprise attack led by Eren, Marley swiftly acts to return the favor. With Zeke's true plan revealed and a military force under new rule, this battle might be fought on two fronts. Does Aaron intend fulfilling his half brother's wishes, or does he have a plan of his own? Uh, yeah, we're watching this. Of course, <laughs> yeah. We're watching this. Like, hello. <laughs> like, why are we watching this? Like, we watched literally every other season. Exactly. In existence. And I love me some Attack on Titan. I enjoyed the first half of this season very, very yeah. much. Yep, and I enjoy hot, sexy new Aaron who, <laughs> like, hot, sexy, uh, this, to- this topic, uh, Aaron. It's, it's, my, it's my favorite flavor. And I want me some more peak. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we'll be covering so, yes. that. <sighs> Up next <laughs> to Shimatsu no Harem by Axis and Studio Gokumi. The time is near future Tokyo, Japan in 2040. Rieto, a young man suffering from an intractable disease, vows to reunite with his childhood friend, Erisa, and decides to cold sleep to cure her illness. When he wakes up five years later, the world was undergoing a massive transformation. The MK male killer virus killed, mm. killed 99.9% of men on the planet, the ground was a super harem with five billion women for every five men. <laughs> One billion women each. <laughs> I read the manga. Well, I shouldn't say I read the manga. I looked up random scenes in the manga. Uh huh. Bet you did. And uh, man, this is trash. <laughs> It's so trash. It but sounds trash. It's just like redo of healer levels of trash. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm in the mood for that. Well, here's the thing. So, I the one thing holding me back from saying, like, trying to beg you for this and why I actually don't care if we cover it or not is because it's airing censored. And like the, uh, the uncensored part is like uh, like a week behind. Like we're basically, if we cover this, we're gonna be covering the censored part, the censored version. And the censored version is basically a white screen for ninety percent of the episode. So <coughs> honestly, I don't feel like we should. I'm not gonna fight for it because I feel like it's just any good scene that could possibly come from it. We're not gonna get to enjoy it. Like I said, I don't like it. These are not comedies. Next. Mm-hmm. Next up, we have Slow Loop by Connect. With Hiyori, a, when Hiyori, a young girl whose de- deceased father taught her the joys of fishing, head off to sea for some time alone, she never thought that she would encounter another girl there. After a while, the girl named Koharu and her, and, and her end up fishing and cooking together. And they get to know each other over a b- uh, other a bit in the... Why is this so weirdly worded? And they get to know each other a bit over the tea time. During their brief t- time together, Koharu finds out that the reason Hiyori went out to <coughs> sea that day was because she's hesitant towards meeting her new stepfamily that same evening. But what a coincidence! Koharu is also meeting her new family tonight. No, it can't be a coincidence. Follow these two sisters. Wow, spoiler! In their new life together. <laughs> Thank you for spoiling me. Slow loop. 
There was another fishing anime recently. Um, which I don't remember what it was called, but I think it was more fun than this. Excuse me. Um, sure. It just has like I don't know. It feels right up your alley. It's probably, like, I will doing... probably watch Lolly's it. Lolly's doing, but Lolly's doing nothing. Listen, I have some requirements for my taste. Mm-hmm. You know, they can't just be doing nothing. Even I have limits. Fishing is boring as hell. Uh... <laughs> so they better be doing something more than fishing. All right, that's all I'm saying. Ew. I didn't even mean it that way, but sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have Sonobisk da Wakoi Wosuru uh, by Cloverworks. High schooler Wakana Gojo cares about one thing, making Hina dolls, but nobody shares his obsession. He has trouble finding friends or even holding conversation. But after the school's most popular girl, Marin Karagawa, Kiragawa, reveals a secret of her own, he discovers a new purpose for his sewing skills. Together, they'll make her cosplay dreams come true. Now, see, this mm-hmm. is an ecchi that I can get behind. Yes, I feel like this. if we were doing an ecchi this season, this would probably be the one. Yeah. Uh, it sounds fun. I'm gonna put this, it reminds me of um, a little bit of Nagataro. That's what I was thinking, bit. yeah. A little bit. A bit. So we'll put that as a maybe. Was Nagataro an ecchi? Yeah, it just wasn't like super overtly etchy. Like it had its moments, like the uh, the 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 art student president or whatever, where her big tits were out and she painted herself naked all the time. Right. But other than gotcha. that, not much. Gotcha. Um, next up we have Tensai Oji no Akaji Koka Seisei Jutsu by Yokohama Animation Lab. Once upon a time in a faraway land, there lived a prince, a genius prince. This genius prince fought alongside his people and led them to a great many triumphs. However, truth be told, he just wants to let everything go and live in tranquility. Not the best-selling uh, synopsis. So, was it Savior or Orion? I always confuse which one was telling me about this. I, <laughs> yeah. I want to say it was Savior, but last time I said last Savior, time said Orion, Orion it, it, <laughs> it was Savior. All right. It was Savior. Okay. Yeah. All right. Or- Orion, you heard that. <laughs> I mean, Orion probably also I... vouched for this show, but I, I heard it from Savior. Okay. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> um, okay. So I will take this. Mm-hmm. I will take um, also the second season of Genjutsu Shugi. I won't do both. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like this was competing with Genji 2. And yeah, because they're both pretty much the same show. Yes, it, it feels very similar. So I'm not going to, I would not do both. I'm fine with either or, honestly. Mm-hmm. Also, this girl got them thick legs. So oh, right. The, right. The, them I thighs. The thighs, yes. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll hash that out shortly. But for uh-huh. now, let's talk about the next one who read that one was it me or you <laughs> you it was okay. you <clears throat> up next we have tokyo 24 ku i feel like this would be read as what like oh fuck i've had to do numbers. tokyo niju tokyo niju yonku by cloverworks enter the 24th ward a man-made island inside tokyo bay Three of its inhabitants, Shuta, Ran, and Koki, have been best friends since childhood. After a deadly incident, everything changed. A year later, reunited for the first time, they receive a mysterious phone call. On the other line is a familiar voice from a friend who's supposed to be dead. Together, they'll have to save their home. Is this another CG anime? It looks CG from the picture. Is it? No, it's not. Yes, it is. Oh, it's like... When is it CG? Is it? I was just looking at the picture. No. Right it. no. Oh, it's just it really no ugly. CG. It's no. just super ugly. Never mind. Nah. Don't do, <laughs> don't do them like that. Uh. Damn. Damn. <laughs> I don't like their colors. Like, I hate them. Ugh, it's so ugly. Why is one green, one red, and one blue? It's not the pop of girls. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, since Oni oh is God, clearly is so, so disgusted much... by it, <laughs> Cloverworks is doing so many anime. 
They really are. All right. All right. Next up, we have Tribe Nine by Linden Films. Haru Shigo Shirogane is a weak-minded person who is constantly bullied Will, while Taiga has traveled from across the sea in hopes of becoming the strongest man in the world. One night, the two meet up with Shun Kamiya, the strongest XB, extreme baseball player, <laughs> and leader of the Minato tribe. When they meet, each of the tribes scattered throughout the Neo-Tokyo are about to face a major threat. On the, on the orders of the king of Neo-Tokyo, Potention, the Chiyode Tri, led by the mysterious Ojiro Otori, has started to take control of all the tribes in the country. Their evil clutches are about to reach the Minato tribe. I have no idea what the fuck I just read. <laughs> the gag is is that <laughs> all of that, that long thing that looks so long, it's literally just a, like three sentences? really big sentences. Yeah. Yes. Like, what? And also, I would have, like, I saw the trailer. One, this is, I'm I'm gonna assume this is the same guy who did what's him calls it. Uh uh um um shit shit what is that anime? Um Dungan Rumpa. Cause they literally copy and paste some of these character designs. Is literally copy and paste. So. Just Let me see. scroll to the tra- trailer. And you'll see it immediately. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I see. Yes. I see. Oh, yeah. It's you're right. Copy it's, and paste. This dude. Oh, yeah. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so, given with that, given that it's the same person who made that anime, um, I've been like, oh, that sounds like cool or whatever. And I would have considered it if it literally was anything but sports. It's sports? This was just what like about a- that red is sports except for the guy being an extreme baseball player? It's all baseball. Really? I thought he was it's, trying to kill each other. Oh, whatever. It's is it is is baseball. Man, way to ruin my. Oh, I guess that makes sense because nine nine players. Uh, yeah, it is it. just baseball. that was a roller coaster. I went from being to not caring to being utterly confused <laughs> to being hyped because Dongan Ropa to now being disappointed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I didn't even know what I read. I was let me just watch the trailer. I'm just like they're hitting. It's like super, like oh, it's just it's baseball, but in the future. Like, wow. I'm like, damn, this looks so nice and well, like animated. Too mm-hmm. bad it's about something I don't care about. Way to ruin it. I might still check out mm-hmm. one episode because I like Dung Ropa so much, but not for the podcast. Nope. All right, and last but not least, you have Vanitas No Cart Part Two, a second cur of Vanitas No Cart. It's 19th century Paris, and young vampire Noé hunts for the Book of Vanitas. Attacked by a vampire-driven insane, a human doctor called Vanitas attempts oh, tempts Noé with a mad crusade to cure the entire vampire race. While lying with him may be dangerous, news reaches Vanitas that the beast of Givaudan has returned, and Noe is being brought along to investigate this phantom from the past. Mm. I didn't see the first season. God, my throat hurts <laughs> from that one. Whew, so, pass on that, but yes, we but... finally reached all the, the end of this. <laughs> Thank God. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, Are there any leftovers from last season that we're still covering? Oh, not platinum. Platinum end. <laughs> Pass on that. No. So that's so we have a lot of room to work with. Uh, to reiterate, for those of you who aren't familiar with what we do, we're gonna choose six shows to cover for next season. We're gonna cover them weekly on our GNA podcast. Um, so we're gonna do that now. We're gonna hash these out. Right now, we're definitely covering Kimetsu no Yaiba, aka Demon mm-hmm. Slayer, and we're definitely covering uh, Shingeki no Kyojin. Mm-hmm. So we have four slots to play with. Oh wow! And we have the viewer choice, or the patron choice, I should say. Which makes seven. Which makes seven. So wow. Right so yeah, I feel like we have so much room this time. Yeah. It's been a while since we had to actually think about it. You should be like, oh, we have two left. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Quick. Um, and we don't really have that much that we were interested in. We have the fantasy B shoujo, which is the guy who transforms into a girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, Realist Hero Part 2, mm-hmm. Cop Drama, mm-hmm. uh, the one that's like that one anime by the Konosuba guy. 
mm-hmm. the monsters. Uh, Princess Connect season two, your Shonen Eye, uh, the Gyaru one with the cosplay, and the other one that's like Realist Hero. But with the thick thighs. <laughs> the realest thighs. Yeah, the realest thighs. Um, hmm. Out of all these, I mean, the most the one I want the most is definitely Princess Connect. Um, I'm not against adding Princess Connect. Okay. I feel like it's just very popular. Um, uh, God, do I want to add? It's. It, I feel like I'm like, do I want to add the 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 BL anime? I, I'm only considering because we it's like it's different from what else we have. That's like I've, exactly we don't have a rom com. Uh-huh. Exactly. Um, so I'm just like, mm. um. Also, it's like everything else I'm gonna pick is just gonna be comedy. Exactly, everything else is comedy. I don't know. I feel, like BL, I feel like the BL anime is not going to be that much of a comedy. Like, it'll, it'll be cute. I, I don't, I respect, I think it's going to be more romance than comedy. That's usually how BL anime does, you know. And I feel like I'm going to be, I like, I don't, I don't mind watching it. I think I'm down to watch it. I just, I know I'm going to be like, Oh, this isn't given because given <laughs> is like my new standard for, you know, Shonen and I. As long as it's better than that one show, fuck. What does that? What was that show? That was really really bad. That show and I. Oh God, was the one with the actors? Oh no, not that one. Even older than that. <sighs> um um uh the one who was like a teacher, sitting with a student. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fuck, I think there's like a fantasy one where it's like people had tails or something. Or we ears or cat it. ears. How can never... We didn't cover that on the podcast. No, we didn't, but I remember I watched it, or you watched it or something. Did I watch it? I really don't recall And it. you were just like ranting about it. I don't remember if it was on a podcast episode, <laughs> or it was just one of your off-the-cuff rants. <laughs> yeah, I probably like just scrubbed it from my memory. Mm-hmm. Well, Luckily, so I'm not against covering the Shonen I because at least it's something different, and we haven't covered yeah. a, a Shonen I in a long time. That's true. Okay, so I'm putting it on the list. Okay, so and then we still have two slots left. Um, well, I guess one was realistically going to either go to the realist hero or that other one that Savior suggested. Personally, I'm down to try the newer one just because I like I kind of know what I'm going to get with realist hero. As much okay. as I do like it, so you okay with that? Yep. All right. So we move that. Um, we got one more thing open. Only oh god, we only have one more already. <laughs> yeah, that was quick. That was quick. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Um. So I guess we have the comedy etchy. We have um, <clears throat> the evil villain people. That's also comedy. And then we have the cop comedy. I feel like... I don't know. I don't know. I feel, I feel like my instinct is saying... No to the cop one. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's more of a, of a risk. I feel like I'm taking a risk. We're already taking a risk with the Shonen I one. Yeah, um, I'm kind of torn between uh the one with the genetic, the super agent or the evil people, or whatever it's called. What's it yeah. called? Kaijin, Kaiju, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. or um, fantasy bishojo. All right, that was a good one. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck! No, I like both of these. Mm. Also, the cosplay one. <sighs> Excuse me. Also, the cosplay one. I can't choose. Oh man, I really can't choose. 
Oh, excuse me. Let me see the character designs for this one again. Uh, uh, Super Mario Games does a lot. I want to go with the with the Kaijin Kai whatever one because I feel like of these three it has the most potential to be the most crazy comedy, like most off the walls different type of comedy. You think so? The Kaiju one? Yeah. That's fair, because it's like the other one, it is, it is Isekai. Mm -hmm. This one is not, it is fantasy, but it's not Isekai. And we already have an Isekai. Right. So, yeah, I'm down. I'm, I'm down. It's like, I, yes, I'm, I'm happy that you're making this choices. I don't <laughs> want to. The tough choices. Oh. The tough choices. But hey guys, if you are unsatisfied with that, guess what? If you're a patron or channel member or Twitch sub, you used to have a vote. You used to have a say in this scenario. So mm -hmm. you can choose our seventh show. But for now, we will definitely be covering Demon Slayer second season, uh, Shingeki no Kyojin season, final season part two, uh, Kaijin Kai Habatsu no Kuritsu san, Princess Connect Redive season two, Sasaki Tomiyano. And Tensei Oji no Okaji Koka Seisei Jutsu. Um, so yeah, that's looking what our lineup is going to be like this season on the Jinin Podcast. Make sure that you're following us for that. Um, I wanted to say if there was anything else I had to say before mm -hmm. we do a transition out of this. No, take it. Take, take it away. Take it away, yeah. All right. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode of the GNA Podcast, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you can get all these episodes as they go up every week. If you haven't already, you join the party over on our Discord, follow us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter, all linked in the description down below. If you'd like, you can even become a channel member or a channel patron, like all these lovely people on screen right now who make the show possible. Drew, do you have anything you'd like to add? Um, yeah, let us know what, you, what anime you're looking forward to this season. There's a lot of interesting choices. I know that's not the most heavy handed season this year, but you know, this maybe, you know, suggest some that I can maybe enjoy on my time off. Same. I'm curious to know what you guys are looking into. By the way, Drew, that anime we were talking about before it was called Loveless. I looked it up. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> end it, end it. Bye, Bye guys. Till next time. This has been Silveroni, and how dare you judge out of years of trauma that I tried to repress? How dare you? Until next time. We'll see y'all later. Later. Bye.